The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny, this mm-hmm. week on the Pope on Film, we are finally reaching the end of the month-long celebration known as Bugoween. Yes. Or Bugtober. I, I wasn't sure, but I didn't also didn't want to like fish out old notes, so... Bunnoween uh, is what I we're think it was Bunnoween. Right okay, that's what I thought. But then it's like the entire month of October isn't Halloween, so would yeah. it be Bunnoween? But any, but it sounds better. But anyway, <laughs> for the uninitiated, Bunnoween is the month where we celebrate the birthday of podcaster, filmmaker, former porn actor, and amateur fly fisherman, Mr. Bunny Wilberforce Williams. That's right. By and, watching. and I've taken you all on a very strange journey over these four weeks. Yes, we celebrate Bunnoween by watching in horror as Bunny Williams picks whatever bizarre-ass movies he wants to on the Pope on <laughs> Film podcast. Culminating Bunnoween. in this yeah. week's movie. Yeah. Bunnoween is also a month where kids dress as minions in low rent Avengers and get free Smarties, but that's beside the point. Yes. This is the last movie that we will be doing for Bunny Williams' bizarre list of eye challenging films. And oh my God, it is a doozy. But, but before leaving the introduction, I just wanted to say thank you, Bunny. Finally, <laughs> thank you. Finally, you listened to me. If you all recall, in the beginning of Bunnoween, uh, even even in the end of September, when we were talk- talking about what we were going to do for Bunnoween, mm-hmm. that episode, I specifically said, if you go back and listen, you will absolutely hear it. In that episode, in the be- beginning of Bunnoween, I said right here on the Pope on Film podcast that I really do hope that, you know, I didn't know the movies that you were picking throughout this month, but I, I repeatedly said that of all the movies you end up picking, this Bunnoween, at least one of the films has to feature an old man in front of a church removing his fake eye and giving it to a topless underage prostitute. I said that over yes. and over again. Mm-hmm. But that week you said, oh no, instead we're going to watch a minion get a blowjob from a decapitated, a decapitated head. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, fine. I guess I'll wait. For for it, and then we did that episode, and that was a good episode. But then I said, "Hey, is the next film going to feature an old man in front of a church removing his fake eye from his empty, bloody eye socket and giving mm-hmm. it to a topless underage prostitute?" And you said, "No. Instead, we're going to let Mother Earth get raped." Yay! <laughs> so then. In week three, I begged, I pleaded, I said, please, Bunny, please, yes, please, baby, baby, please, please, can we finally watch a film where an old man in front of a church removes his fake eye from his empty, bloody eye socket and hands it to a topless, underage Mexican prostitute? And you said, eh, you know what, we're going to watch Down Syndrome Kids literally kill snails, because that mm-hmm. sounds fun. Like, uh-huh. super fun. And you know what? I was about to give up on my dream, my fantasy, my fan dream to see. Yeah. Of seeing an old man in front of a church gleefully removing his fake eye from his empty, bloody eye socket and handing it to a topless, wildly underage prostitute. But ah, but finally, this week, buddy, this week, the man delivers. Yeah. Yes, this week we discussed the 1973 codeine-fueled LSD fever dream known as The Holy Mountain. Yes. Now, and, can, oh my God, oh my God, what yeah. a laugh riot this film was. Wow, Holy Shore has still got it. Yes, he does. I was uh, blown away. I thought, ah, Holy Shore, he's... He's he's past his prime, but oh my god, the man still has it. The the weasel yeah. still has it. And you know? fucking and fucking but, Michael Myers. Yeah, this is the, Michael Myers. The other Michael Myers, right? <laughs> the one, the one who was the mask, 
Yes, Michael Myers. Uh -huh. Yeah, fucking fucking ripped off Paulie Shore for the Love Guru and completely fucked it up. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, oh, and what about that hilarious scene where Andy Dick falls into the cake at the fancy ball? Yes. Oh, I laughed so hard. Yes. Do you... seeing Aunt Dick fall into the cake at the party, then milk came out of my nose, which is really weird because I didn't drink milk, so I've actually been to a number of specialists. Do you do you ever feel sorry for Paulie Shore? Sometimes I feel really sorry for Paulie Shore. It's I, gotta, it's there gotta was suck a... to peak at 20. He's there like was Toby a time Hooper. when I felt... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time when I felt really bad when when I when I I, I felt really bad for Pauly Shore, but that was because Pauly Shore realized that people didn't like him. So he made this comedy and it was like a mockumentary mm -hmm. where Pauly Shore decides to fake his death. And he, he Pauly Shore plays Pauly Shore and yeah. he realizes that everyone hates Pauly Shore. So he fakes his death, but then he gets really depressed because everyone is super excited that he's finally dead. <laughs> that and had goes to Sam Kennison, comedian. right? Huh? That had the ghost of uh, Sam Kinison, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, but but everyone, but everyone was like, "Oh, Polly Shore's dead! Oh, great! I always hated him." So he gets all depressed. Mm -hmm. So there was a period in time when I was like, "Oh, hey, this is kind of a bold move for Polly Shore. I hope this is successful for him." No, it bombed because even when Polly Shore dies in the film Polly Shore's Dead, people still don't want to see a Polly Shore movie. <laughs> So even the film where he fakes his own death bombed, and that made me feel bad. I'm like, oh, this was like his last chance, and it was a yeah. it was a bold move to fake your own death in a mockumentary because you know that people hate you, mm -hmm. but people hate you so much that they don't want to see you fake your death, and that's when I'm like, oh, it, it this this has to be the nail in the coffin, you know. <laughs> even dying cannot get our attention, Paulie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just can't, I just I just can't can't imagine what it's like to wake up every morning, you know, and look in the mirror and go, "Oh fuck, I'm still Pauly Shore." Yeah, yeah. God yeah. damn it! I mean, how would you feel if you woke up, look in the mirror, and you're like, oh, "I'm Hasselhoff." I'm fucking hassled yeah. off. Yeah. Good Christ. The 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 thing is though that's really weird is that I've never really been a fan of Pauly Shore. Yeah. And yet, and yet, if I'm at a restaurant and you can't get free refills and it's like, oh, uh, uh, no free refills, but the soda machine is right there, yeah. I will go and I will get myself more soda. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I will think, and sometimes I'll even say out loud, I'm going to go wheeze the juice. <laughs> That's from mm -hmm. uh, Encino Man. I don't even remember frickin' Encino Man, but I'm quoting no. Pauly Shore. That's a Pauly Shore line that has just burrowed itself into my brain. I'm always <laughs> wheezing the juice. All the time. I'm always wheezing the juice. Mm -hmm. sometimes I'll save a McDonald's cup and then go back like two days later and get myself a refill of freaking Powerade that, that's, then, a, that's a good out, idea but I noticed me, I'm wheezing the juice <laughs> it's weird and and have you ever gotten busted because I don't think they would oh, even give a on. shit I'm always worried that, that, that I'll get in trouble but you're right no one gives a shit yeah why <clears throat> Why hassle some guy because he took a cup of soda? Yeah. So anyway, Bunny, who was your favorite character in The Holy Mountain? Was it actress Anna DeSaad who played the prostitute? That was super fun. Oh, what about, oh she was oh she was hot. What about I, she was Ron totally... Ferrara as Fawn? That was also another memorable character because, of course, you know everyone's name from this film. They make it so clear. Yeah. My favorite character was, of course, Chucho Chucho, who played the chimpanzee. <laughs> I really thought that that was uh, that was really like the 
the most amazing part of the film is the chimpanzee. I honestly love this freaking movie. Oh, good. But see, so we, much. Built, we built up to it. I mean, I really wonder what you would have thought of this movie if if we did not watch the previous movie. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was thinking that too. Wait, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this movie. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of research for this episode, and I just want to make it clear that I don't mean that I just Googled the film title and read a few web pages, okay? I, I, I do not do that. I use Bing. Yes. <laughs> because there's less of a chance of the NSA listening to everything because no one gives a shit about Bing. I would be Alta Visting shit if I could. But in the majority of sites and websites and reviews and articles that I read about the Holy Mountain, one specific phrase or a slightly different version of this same phrase kept appearing. And th- and it's this. Oh, this film can't be reviewed. You can't review this film. You only experience it. Uh, critic Jewel Siegel specifically said, quote, Criticism is irrelevant to this work of art. It can only be experienced. Well, isn't that convenient? Mm -hmm. You know? So, in other words, they didn't get it. Yeah. They didn't get it. But how, yeah, how convenient is that? You can make a film so bizarre and stark and artsy and colorful that, ooh, look at that. It's so bizarre that you can't review my movie. What? It's a win-win. It's a win for the director, and it's a win for the critic as well, who doesn't have to write an actual freaking review. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is my new con. I'm going to be a film critic who never reviews anything. Awesome. It It is pointless to review the work of art that is Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill. <laughs> it's simply a film you must feel. It is yep. a futile gesture to critique Saw 5. <laughs> where every scene is a work of art. It yes. is impossible to truly review the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure. You must experience it for yourself so <laughs> i had this like i had this like cocky attitude in my head going into this film where it's like i don't give a shit what every website on the internet says i'm gonna critique the hell out of this and like 10 minutes into it i realized okay i hate this film it is stupid <laughs> and that's why i love it this film this, this film is just like artsy fartsy shit but in such a great way like in like 10 minutes into the film we have a fake Jesus mm-hmm. who's being crucified and thrown rocks and he befriends a m- midget without arms and legs yeah. and he ends up in the city where he joins a a frog circus and the frogs all <laughs> die explosions. It's all so fucking stupid and I'm like, oh my god, this is only like nine minutes into the film. Well, you know, he just retold different stories in an artistic way so like like i had mentioned i had watched this before we taped last week's episode and mostly because i wanted to make sure it was in english or or if it was subtitled yeah and if you see you you there's not really any dialogue yeah until the alchemist shows up and that's like yeah, like for the first minutes into the film. Yeah, so at that point, I'm just like, okay, you know, you got me. I'm watching this movie now. There are some parts to this film that I related to so much. Yeah, because I have a lot of I, I spent a lot of my childhood in Mexico, and if there's one thing that really truly like spoke to me personally, it's the Mexican government rounding up subjects and then shooting them dead and then a bunch of rich white people taking pictures yeah wearing sombreros and shit and then one of the women is taken by the mexican police force and raped but she's so excited like oh my god i'm being raped take a picture honey well was joe dorowski fucking perfect was joe dorowski mexican i know the movie was shot in mexico (laughs) But was he Mexican or was he Spanish? 
he's Chilean, but he did use like uh, Mexican military and filmed in Mexico. Yeah. And uh, the on, gotta... Mexican people and the Mexican government got super fucking pissed at him. And there were protests and shit. Yeah. So you just threw that in my head, huh? Uh, no, I didn't. I first beat it to warn the window and it just happened to ricochet. I... Okay. Well, I guess <laughs> you get a pass then. Um, and depending on the quality of the recording, your peeing may have made this episode better. <laughs> yes. If you there was, it. if there was ever a movie that you would that that piss <laughs> would help. Oh no! It's this weird ass fucking movie. Yeah. Honey, you really have to watch the Holy Mountain. This no, is I amazing. don't. It's fucking amazing. I'm sorry. Jesus. No. Oh shit no, it was, was really just so cool. beautiful to look at. And that guy from Mortal Kombat turns <laughs> it into gold while Jesus is put into this giant bong. Mm-hmm. And he he sweats out this like gunk, and then a, a naked black woman with Hebrew tattoos all over her body takes the gunk, yeah, and saves it in jars. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, no, but it's not Jesus; it's fake angry potato Jesus. Uh, yeah. still Jesus. Yeah. Fake angry potato Jesus or not, it's holy. they were so yams. Is- okay, no, here's the thing: is it is what you believe it is. Hmm? You, a thing only has the power that you are willing to give it. See, I'm pretty sure the director. Well, said why? Exactly why would you? Why movie. would you not want to to give yeah. power to a movie if that you're sitting down to enjoy? No, I'm pretty sure. No, see, I'm y'all pretty sure, are giving power to this movie by doing this podcast. I'm pretty sure that I, I Natasha, think this movie deserves okay. power. What? Uh, it, at, at some point in time, someone went to Alejandro Jadowski and said, what is this movie about? And uh, the man said, I would like to quote uh, a future quote yeah. <laughs> from a woman named Jesus. Natasha who pees loudly. <laughs> she said, ow, that really hurt. <laughs> Hit me like a <laughs> motherfucker. Such an interesting quote. <laughs> yeah, and then and then like and then like John and George are like, oh wow, man, that makes so much sense to me. <laughs> no, Paul and Ringo are they, they, in England. No, it, it's it's John and Yoko who are like, yes, I understand that perfectly. <laughs> Do you do you imagine as the last two surviving Beatles, Ringo and Paul are secretly trying to assassinate each other like spy versus spy? No, no. There's a quote of Paul saying that he hangs out with Ringo. He sees him a lot because he's a good boy. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> that's depressing. even like in their sixties and seventies, Ringo is the he's the like, so little good boy. one. Like that's fucking sad. <laughs> So here's the story of the making of this film. Yes. Chilean filmmaker Alejandro Jadowski is known nowadays for two things. For his bizarre trippy western film El Topo uh-huh. and, and for starting work on what would have been an amazing fucking version of Dune. Oh my god, wouldn't that have been... Now that you've seen this, could you imagine what he would have done with Dune? And oh, the shit, people that he was getting getting to sign on to this project yeah. was unreal. Not only can I see his Dune from uh, watching this film, but we got a book in like a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah. And it was like the, the 50 greatest movies that were never made. Yeah. And it was just a this book and and whole chapters about films that they were working on, they had planned on, they wrote a script for. Here are the 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 images for the storyboard, and for whatever reason, it fell through. And I flipped through it because okay, yeah, no, there's there's a freaking uh, uh, Nicholas Cage's Superman. All right, there you go. Yeah, there is uh, that weird uh, Batman and Robin sequel that would have featured like uh harley quinn is like yeah. the joker's daughter like okay here's all that weird stuff and then wait a second 
Here's like 50 pages on who the fuck is Alejandro Jadowski. I don't know who he is, but his Dune apparently would have been great. He's, and then, he's got he's got quite a cult following because he is a brilliant huh? director. Yeah, he's a brilliant director that also kind of likes rape, I learned. He's a big fan kinda. of rape, but I really, really yeah. don't want to get into that. Okay. But... Um, if you want to learn more about director Alejandro Jodowski and rape, just go to the criticisms and controversy section of his Wikipedia page. <laughs> the man was kind of into rape. That's all I want to say. So I don't like, like this guy's amazing and this guy's brilliant, but this guy isn't fucking the next coming of Jesus. Cause he was really raping. He was really raping. But literally entire books have been written about his version of Dune that fell through. Instead, we got Kyle MacLachlan dressed as a freaking G.I. Joe reject. Yeah. Hanging out with a shirtless sting. <laughs> I'm still surprised but, at the movie. But yep. Jodorowsky did, did recommend, when because he brought it to the studio and everything, and the studio said, good news, bad news. We're gonna do Dune, just not with you. Yeah, yeah. And, and you saw all the work the fucking man put into it. Oh hell yeah! Hell and he yeah. was like, "Okay, if it's not me, give it to David Lynch, please." Yeah. And like that's how that's how it went into David Lynch's hands. But good God, I mean, he had he had like two New York telephone books. Of yeah. notes, yeah, and sketches and drawings, and he got H.R. Giger working on it. I love yeah. Giger. I fucking love Giger. Yeah, the illustrations the for what would have been his Dune are fucking amazing. Yeah, and and he, there were a couple of other people attached to the movie that that made my draw drop, and I just can't think of who. Yeah, you know, no, it's freaking amazing. Yeah. I'm still surprised that the movie Dune was a bomb. Wow. It's not like Dino De Laurentiis to make a flop. Yeah. Said no one ever. Yeah, that was Dino De Laurentiis? Dune? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that it was, was totally him. That's that's freaking freaking seventies King Kong, Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah, that's sad. He, 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 had, he had a lot of power. Uh, he, he was attached to the Evil Dead movies. Yeah. Do you know yeah. De Laurentiis? Yeah, and Amneville 6 or whatever. Yeah. So, Alejandro Jadowski is known for those two things. El Topo, he's known for his amazing Doom that never went through, mm -hmm. and for really liking Ray. Those two things. <laughs> so, so, he makes El Topo a trippy ass Western, but with Eastern symbolism and uh, bizarre imagery and deformed midgets, which is always fun. Bizarre ass film. That's it's so bizarre. It's such a bizarre film that it starts playing in theaters in New York and LA and it's playing at midnight and stuff like that. In fact, Eleanor, leave mommy's new tablet alone. Leave it alone. Okay. That's mommy's. Leave it alone. Okay, leave it alone. Mommy. 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 Can you say any other words other than mommy? Can say no. 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 Nice. Yeah. It, it, we. Uh. She found uh, Maxwell's book. Um, don't let the pigeon drive the bus, like a classic. Yeah. Kids book, and so she literally has Natasha or I read it to her about 15 times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And you have to make sure the pigeon doesn't drive the bus. So she's just saying no over and over again. That's her go-to. No means no. No means yes. No <laughs> means I want to get down. No means please give me that. No is her word. Yeah. She is no baby. Just Freaking like a amazing. woman. <laughs> yep. Yep. I can say I, I can agree with you because Natasha's not in the room. <laughs> El Topo and and, and it, I think you will 
agree with this and appreciate this. El Topo is one of about five or six or eight movies that are all called, quote, the first real cult movie, whatever the fuck that means. There's there's like a short list of movies that are all considered to be the first cult movie. Rocky Horror (laughs) Picture Show. Rocky Horror Picture Show, Eraserhead, Pink Flamingos, El Topo, Night of the Living Dead, maybe Eight and a Half. Those are all considered, oh, well, this film, unlike the other seven films on this list, this film is truly the first cult film. (laughs) Like, what even does fucking cult film mean nowadays? Yeah. Especially when there are movies that are specifically being created for the sole purpose of being cult films. I always felt that a cult film was a film that that really thought it was going to be great and huge and massive and it Uh ended up failing, but then it found a new audience later. Yes. But now there are films that are just like Lavalanchula versus the Avalanche Sharks. Yeah, and and like I've always said, man, you, you can't set out to make a cult movie. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't set out to make a cheesy movie. Yeah. You know, you got to put out the best movie that you can do, you know, yeah. just to satisfy yourself as an artist. Because if, if you're not that, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. And, and so a cult, so a cult movie, right. It, yeah. It, it. Bombs at the box office. Yeah. But it has heart. Yeah. And a group of people find it well after and, and popularize it, like Plan yeah. 9 you, or. Yeah, you just Reaper described um, uh, Hot Rod. Yeah, Hot Rod. Fucking, uh-huh. Fucking movie. Hot Rod. What's going on? Some sort of interactive theater art piece? <laughs> Like, that's what you say when you see your father uh, dying on a couch. What yeah. is this? Some sort of interactive theater art piece? That's the first <laughs> thing that comes to your head. Eleanor, I can't read Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. I am recording the podcast. Ask Mommy or Emerald or the dog. I can't read that to you right now. I'm not moving my legs so you can sit on my lap and make me read Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. <laughs> Have somebody else read it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else will read it to you. So El Topo is playing it at midnight yeah. in the early 70s, and it is watched by John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and George Harrison, and of course those trippy-ass motherfuckers fucking love this goddamn movie. Yeah. So they get their shyster manager, Ron D. Klein, played by John Belushi. Uh-huh. His real name is Alan Klein, but in my head it's the Ruddles version of him. <laughs> So it's Ron Decline, and he's wearing like a like a what is it like a a, turtle, a black turtleneck and sunglasses. Yeah, and he has two uh, angry badass guys on either side of him, played by Franken and Davis. <laughs> <clears throat> so in my mind, it's not a, a music manager Alan Klein. No, it's shyster manager Ron Decline, played by John Belushi. Yes. And he gets the rights to distribute El Topo uh, throughout America and the U.S. and release it on DVD. Also, um, John and Yoko and George Harrison and Ron D. Klein give uh, Alejandro Jadowski a crap ton of money for whatever the fuck his next movie is going to be. Uh-huh. Whatever you want to do, here's here's like base here's a million dollars split apart from all of us. To just make another movie. It doesn't even matter what it is. You make whatever movie you want. Yeah. So, of course, Chilean filmmaker Alejandro Jadowski was really thinking, I want to do a different film. A film that challenges people. Mm-hmm. A film that really open minds. So, here is my idea. The film is set in a school. And is centered around a young man named <laughs> Danny Zuko. <laughs> He has a car that can fly in the air, and he loves this white woman, played by an Australian. (laughs) They sing songs about rape, but it will be okay, (laughs) because no one will notice the rapey parts. 
lot of rape. And then at the end, the woman changes exactly who she is so that she can please her man because women are second-class citizens because of rape. Yeah. I want to call the film Greasy-Haired Bastard People. <laughs> Did I mention it will be a musical? But instead, he decided to do this film, uh-huh. The Holy Mountain. I can only assume, and I, and basically this is what you were saying, uh, earlier, but basically, the, the way that he wrote the script for this week's film is he got a blender, yes, and then he bought pretty much every holy text in existence. Uh huh. Here's the Quran. Here's the Bible. Here's the I Ching. Here's the Satanic Bible. Here's Yes I Can by Sammy Davis Jr. And he just put that in the blender. Uh huh. And he ran it on puree for like 10 minutes. And whatever papers were left, he glued them together while tripping on LSD. He did a lot of LSD during filming, apparently, and got the cast to do it, too. So that's how you get Angry Potato Jesus and the alchemist who can turn shit into gold, ascending a literal holy mountain to replace the gods who look down on us all. Yes. In fact... This film is such a trippy piece of shit that, of course, George Harrison is like, I want to star in the film. Can I star yeah. in it? Yeah. Uh, originally, George Harrison was uh, slated to star in the film as the thief, as the angry potato Jesus. I just really. Oh, that would have been it. awesome. I, 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 I would have been totally down with that. It makes sense. I can totally see George Harrison in that part. There are certain parts of the soundtrack. It like the that scene with uh, the tarot cards. The tarot will explain everything. Yeah. See, I swear to God, whatever music they played was just an instrumental version of the one Indian song from Sgt. Pepper. Like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure this is just George Harrison getting high and making up some fucking music <laughs> for the soundtrack, but you know, whatever. So George Harrison was all excited to do it, and he's doing drugs with Alejandro Jodowski, and oh, I totally understand the film. Of course I do, because I'm George Harrison, and that's this is just the type of trippy shit I'm into. Also, Monty Python isn't that big yet, so I can't be into them. So I want to uh, I, be in your film. Yeah, I still found it very, very surface, you know? Um, uh-huh. It was trippy just in his interpretation. Um, but really, all he did was take Jesus on the hero's journey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Here's a guy, blah, 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 whatever. He's kind of a dick. And then he gets elevated and meets his mentor. And then there's a love interest. and It's the hero's journey is all that's really yeah. going on here. Yeah, It's just Jodorowsky's reimagining of things, you know, to try to. Yeah. Just to try to make shit interesting, you know? Yeah. I mean, how are you going to do the conquest of Mexico in the context of this film? I mean, you can With have frogs and explosions. Yeah, frogs and lizards and explosions. Eleanor, I can't read that book to you right now. And you I'm know sorry. those lizards and frogs just died. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There are some like frogs that are just thrown in the air, and there's there's just no way that that all of those frogs survived that. Yeah, absolutely no way. Yeah, all all the so, live, all the all the all the lizards with the feathers, they were the Native Americans that the Spanish found. Yeah. And all the frogs were con- con- conquistadors. Yeah. I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm like, okay. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm trying a science experiment. Eleanor, will you get me a beer? Please? Please? Will you get me a beer from the fridge? 
You say no, but you're walking with a purpose like you're totally going to do it. So I'm interested to see if this happens. If you can, Eleanor, she's left the bedroom. Okay. I think this might happen. This is going to be interesting. Nice. This is a learning experience. Oh, but we haven't talked about the best part about the making of this film. Okay. Literally, George Harrison signed a contract to star in this film. And literally, they started filming. Yeah. And George Harrison is on set. And he's ready. And he's like, I'm, I'm totally ready to do this. And I'm really excited. And this is my George Harrison impression. It's less George Harrison and more Justin Long pretending to be George Harrison in Walk Hard. Nice. Oh, you know, I'm just want to write some more songs, you know. How amazing is it that that's one of our most popular episodes? I know. SoundCloud. Yeah. Like, really? Walk hard? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought it would have been something a bit more mainstream, but I, I'm happy for it. You know? Not going to knock it. Yes, for, for for one of the actual... Well, it, it's it's that, and Debbie does Dallas. Yeah, that's not surprising. Yeah. Are two of our yeah. tops. Now, of course, Beat Bugs just ran away with shit. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I wonder how many people we've pissed off with that. Oh, so many. I thought of that. So many. Yeah. I asked you to get me a beer. I wasn't sure if it would work. So so they're there on set and George Harrison's doing acid with the director and he's all excited, but then George Harrison goes, "Oh, you know, I'm 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 rereading the script and it's really Really brilliant, Alejandro. It's just there's there's one small scene that I have a problem with. You see, mm-hmm. I'm George Harrison, and I'm in the Beatles, and I was just wondering if maybe you know if we could maybe. Thank you, Eleanor. I love you. Yay! Yay! <sighs> nice. She has been trained well. There's just one small problem I have. It's just that, you know, I'm a member of the Beatles and I'm really famous. And so if you couldn't have, I was just wondering if there's any way if we could make this film without having a close up shot of my asshole while you're scrubbing it. <laughs> while a, while a woman is scrubbing my asshole with soap. I was just wondering if we could skip over the asshole scrubbing scene. Yeah. Just uh-huh. got a shy asshole. Yeah. George Harrison and George Harrison's asshole. It doesn't appear she, on film. Yeah. She did get between those cheeks and what was concerning yeah, really, me with the, with the iron claws. Yeah. Yeah. She really gets in there and yeah. washes Jesus's asshole. But then, but then of course, Alejandro Jadowski is like, excuse me. That's the most important scene in the film. (laughs) I cannot make this film without showing Jesus getting his asshole washed. (laughs) The most important scene in this film is the scene where Jesus has his asshole washed. I can't not make this film without fake angry potato Jesus getting his asshole washed. I don't need a second beer. I'm good. Just the one beer. She's no, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, she's. this is all she's going to be doing. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. No, put it back. Put it back. Put it back. Put it back. I don't need any more. All done. Put it back. Put it back. Yeah, close it. Okay. So George Harrison drops out of the film for no reason other than he did not want to show his asshole on camera. That is the only reason he dropped out. And in retrospect, Alejandro Jadowski apparently is still alive or was alive long enough to record audio commentary for a DVD. And he specifically says that one of his biggest mistakes is not having, of course, a fucking Beatles star in this film. Yeah. No one no one now knows the Holy Mountain. But Jesus Christ, can you imagine if George Harrison played Jesus? It would have made some actual box. Yeah. Yeah. It would have made some actual box office. 
Yeah. And then also there's the fact that, um, oh, look at me. I'm George Harrison. I'm a little pussy bitch who's afraid to be filmed having his asshole cleaned on camera. <laughs> I would have done that shit for free. Yeah. Hell, I get a free asshole cleaning. But oh, no. <laughs> I rode while my guitar gently weeps. I can't have my asshole cleaned by a naked <laughs> black woman with Hebrew tattoos on her and a claw hand. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm George Fancy Asshole Harrison. I, I don't think... Uh, I, it, it, it would have been great for the box office, and it would be... Uh, I, I think it would have detracted from the movie if George oh, Harrison oh, yeah. started oh, yeah. And I don't think I don't think George Harrison can act up to the level of the guy they got. Yeah, you it's know, like when everybody you put a in a great fucking performance. Yeah, it's like if you watch a film with Ringo Starr in it, it's a film with Ringo Starr. Yeah. Uh -huh. No matter what film it is, oh, that's that film with Ringo in it. Uh -huh. I imagine if Ringo didn't star in it, I probably would end up watching Caveman more. <laughs> but no, Caveman now is just that Ringo Starr movie uh -huh. where Ringo Starr's a caveman. So yeah, no, I could imagine it, you know the way that a, a George Harrison getting his asshole watched movie would be. Uh -huh. But I would like to think that number one, uh, we have set a record in this episode for the amount of times that a single podcast has said World Wide Web. Yes. We've said World Wide Web a lot. World Wide Web. We have said World Wide Web a number of times. World uh -huh. Wide Web. That's number one. So uh, number B is, uh, again, I think that we have uh, set a record for the amount of time a single podcast has talked about a Beatles asshole. Yes. We've talked a lot about a Beatles asshole. Mm -hmm. So, Bunny... I'm assuming that there are there might be a few people listening to this podcast who have not actually seen this film. Wait, did I say a few? I meant to say all. Yeah. Almost all of our listeners. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Bruce Nobles might surprise you. Guillermo mm -hmm. and his handsome good looks. You know, he's he's from New York. I imagine the Holy Mountain plays every other weekend at some theater in New York. Oh, I'm sure. So, um, if you can, buddy, try and describe this film for our listeners who have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. I'd like to think we're selling it well. The, but, pl the plot is, uh, I find the plot fairly straightforward. Yeah. You know, we are basically reinterpreting the life of Jesus, which is full of just fun I enjoyed watching it I found it a lot of eye candy you know yeah. and I did not feel like each and every point of the movie had a deeper meaning you know yeah. what do frogs and lizards have to do with the conquistadors you know what, ha what does that really have to do with anything it was an interesting touch it helped. It helped sell the um, Mexicanness of it, you know. Yeah. But I got a little confused because there was also a lot of stormtrooper visuals in this in the like, beginning. Like piece. How? Huh? Oh yeah, no, in the beginning with with the, like the marching and shit. Yeah. That's what made me yeah. made me start wondering if he wasn't from Spain originally, you know, because yeah. usually, yeah, I I would not be surprised if he le lived through the area era of Francisco Franco. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean that's what went made Pedro Almodovar go insane, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <clears throat> um. A lot of Jesus references. Um, it is it is impossible to not think he's Jesus, and I really think he was called Jesus close to the end. 
Yes. But it's really kind of hard to tell. Um, so, Jesus is pretty much dead in the desert, and he pees himself, and he's got flies all over his face, which, how could you do that if you're, if you're alive at all, you know? Um, he, he gets kind of saved by this group of naked kids who then put him on a cross, and the midget without the arms and legs, like, rescues him somehow, and then they smoke a joint. Um, yes. Then it's the conquistadors. There's, there's a lot about class struggle in this whole section, you know? Um, yeah. Because basically you've got those stormtroopers and they are raping and killing, just executing what you can call the bourgeoisie. Yeah. You know, these these were all people who looked like they had the fucking money. You know? So there's some kind of revolution going on at the time, which, you know, you can kind of make that statement about Jesus being all revolutionary and things like that. Um, Mother Mary has a mustache. That's important. Um, the yeah. Roman guard are all sumo wrestlers. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Jesus takes to drinking with 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 Mother Mary and the sumo wrestlers until he passes out, where they then make a mold of him. Yeah, which I wasn't clear on what they were doing, seeing as the plaster was in a in, in a gutted pig. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it was like lard or something. Yeah, it's weird. And I was kind of afraid. But no, they made a mole of him in in a Jesus pose as if he was as he, he was nailed to the cross. Yeah. And they take him out of the mole and they throw him into the pile of yams. There were potatoes right next to the yams, but he was on the yams. It's still... I Don't I, make I, me fight I, you. I, I refuse to acknowledge that. <laughs> A controversial episode of the Pope on film. Yeah, um, I, I refuse to acknowledge what turnip Jesus or whatever, radish Jesus, no. Yeah, so... so after they throw him in the thing, they, they show you that they are making paper mache Jesuses out of the mold. So when Jesus wakes up, he is surrounded with just uh, oodles. I'm going to go with oodles of, of these paper mache Jesuses that all look like him. Yeah. Which is really kind of fucked up. Uh, and he... he Beats and whips these guys and chases them off, and and he starts destroying the Jesuses. He keeps one and starts walking all around with it. That's where we run into the prostitutes, and we meet who I am interpreting as as Mary Magdalene. Oh and yeah, hell yeah! God was she hot? Yeah, oh, she was my. pretty fast. Yeah, so we kind of we kind of done like. <laughs> Everything that Jesus ever, ever, any association Jesus ever had with prostitutes, we did all in that scene by having them, having them in, in, um, mini skirts, see through black tops, and white go go boots. Yeah. You know, all with yeah. long hair, along with a, a very young girl. Yes. What would you say? Like, I, I'm not good with kids' ages, like 10. I'd say like eight, eight, eight to ten, round about ten. there. Yeah, yeah. Where we get the creepy old guy who 
really all he does is treat her like any old man treats it treats a child like an like, like an old world kind of guy you know like i can yeah. i can see an italian man doing that you know oh look at you look how cute you know that kind of stuff but yeah. it takes the creepy yeah. edge seeing as she is one of the prostitutes oh important fact prostitutes have a chimp Yes, they do. I'm not sure why, but just... Automatic just two sense. points by my rules. Yes. There was a yes. chimp. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so then Jesus walks by. He is... he, uh, uh, And the prostitutes start laughing at him. Uh, but Mary Magdalene starts starts uh, wiping... Oh, hey. Uh, uh, hold on. You you forgot you forgot one of the biggest tropes that this film has. What? Oh, if there's one thing I hate, it, I hate so many. I I hate it when films begin with a video game boss shaving two topless Marilyn Monroe's. You know? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Like trope. I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. That's it. That's <laughs> how. That's how Kramer versus Kramer began. Mm -hmm. So sick of that. Yeah, I I don't know. He I just thought he wanted to start it off strange. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then and then here's and then like I, I got a question about Angry Potato Jesus. Like, there's a store in the town, village, whatever, and it literally said Jesus is for sale. Yeah. Uh huh. And like you could, you could what buy or rent a cross to carry? Like I'm, I was a bit confused <laughs> by that. Yeah. Like, are you buying this? Or are you just renting it? I'm so confused. Well, he he just seemed to just grasp different parts of the Jesus myth, and and reworked it into the movie. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's why. That's why. The symbolism, that's why I found it, that's why I didn't find it quite as deep as other people did. The, the, way, the way that I saw it, the way that I saw this film is, this film is what would happen if they made a Family Guy movie, but they just used the non sequiturs. <laughs> yeah. And not the actual characters like it's a family guy movie but it's it's none of the characters it's just gee lois i haven't felt this happy i i feel as happy as fascists at a dance party <laughs> and then it shows all the soldiers dancing together and stuff yeah yeah that's what this film was mm -hmm. in fact um yeah. they should have got alejandro jadowski he would have been great to make a Far Side movie. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, I can see that entire film. Uh-huh. Yeah. He, he, he would be the perfect guy to show, yeah. to show amoeba yeah. porn. Yeah. It's dividing. And I know it's what... dividing. <laughs> and, and I know it's 1973, and I know it's a different time, but... This film looks so freaking beautiful, and it 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 cost yeah under a million dollars to make. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty amazing because like, that was so high quality this film. film. It's so beautiful and like eye gougingly beautiful, mind blowingly mm. beautiful. And then I think so millions of people, like hundreds of thousands of people get like two hundred million dollars and make Batman v Superman. Yeah. But this guy has eight hundred thousand dollars and makes this and this is fucking beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell? Like like it, it was so attention grabbing. I mean it really grabs your attention and holds on to it. 
You know, because you have yeah. no idea what you're going to see next. Yes, the old man pops his eye out. Yeah. You know, you don't know what bizarre thing you're going to see next. But yeah, basically, I started... basically, Jesus ascends into heaven. Um, so is that what happened when suddenly Jesus and his... Uh topless prostitute disciples are walking and suddenly a giant golden crane appears on a tower Uh huh. and he's like, I'm going to hop on this crane and ride it. Like, and that's when I started losing it. That was also the time when, uh, uh, Jesus started eating the mannequin's face off and released it into the air with balloons. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but if anyone ever wanted to see Jesus in a thong with a knife riding a golden hook up into a magical <laughs> tower, then ain't your weird. Number two, you're in luck. <laughs> Not sure what's happening, but a lot of it is happening. Yes, so, you are in luck. That. Um, so that's it. And if you think about it, that whole first 30 minutes could be cut. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like like this film has different parts. Yeah. So he ascends into heaven basically. He goes up yeah. the hook, up a giant tower, and goes through the top like window or whatever. And it is it is painted multicolor like like you were you just stepped into a rainbow. Yeah, it's a rainbow room with a camel and a naked black woman in Hebrew tattoos, and uh, the character that the internet calls the alchemist. Yes, who who was God? That's that's what he yeah. was doing here. Um, I like to think that he was Christopher Lambert's character in Mortal Kombat, but. <laughs> that, that's just my bad movie knowledge seeping in. Like I see him in the all white outfit, and I'm like, oh, oh, we will fight in Mortal Kombat Stimpy. Yeah, that's my Christopher Lambert impression. It's just Ren and Stimpy, except you. <laughs> oh, Stimpy, we will fight in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So the whole the whole Jesus thing. That's just over. Don't even yeah. don't even worry about that anymore. Um, we are continuing on with the hero's journey where he meets the mentor. I love the costumes in this movie. You know? Yeah, no, they were amazing. And um, okay, okay. So you seem to understand a lot of the symbolism of this. So why does? the alchemist and the naked black woman cut a giant um, protruding mole on the back of Jesus's neck and pull out a blue squid. I think cause it looked cool. <laughs> I, I, I think. Yeah. Okay. I mostly went with this. I mostly went with the surface on this movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it might've had meaning. Uh, I, I think he just did it for it to be unusual and for it to be a really cool shot. Yeah, you know, and and it was maybe it was some kind of statement of how fake everything looks in other movies of the time. Yeah, you know, maybe that's still- what his comment was on that because. Did we have any actual blood? No. It was all blue. I mean, I mean we had one scene with red blood, but it was clear that the bad guys w- was spraying it on them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But everything there else There were scenes was... where people Yeah, there were scenes where people were like shot and killed, but it there's a lot of paint involved, so yeah, different color paint, and yeah, yeah, and making it really obvious how it's being done. 
Yeah. Where that one woman just has like two metal pipes near her eyes that just squirts the paint out. Yeah. So, uh, again, let me go back to the cost of this movie. How do you make a movie that's less than a million dollars while also saying, I need a baby hippo for this scene where Jesus gets his asshole scrubbed clean? Yes. <laughs> like, how do you. How do you do that? Yeah. Without a ridiculous amount of money. Did he have a lot of weird friends? <laughs> like, yeah. does he does he have a friend who's in charge of the zoos? And just like, hey, I, I really need a favor. I need a hippo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Peruza Balk, get in here. Yeah. Help me with this scene. <laughs> yeah. Next mm-hmm. is the scene where naked fake Jesus shits into a bowl and the albino alchemist turns it into gold Uh while Jesus has a steam bath with a pelican in what looks to be a giant bong. Yes. Uh, uh, Slight pause on the podcast. Albino alchemist, that is this week's free band name. So if any bands out there are just starting out and need a name for your group, Albino Alchemist. You can also add a V to that and be the Albino Alchemists. And that and that was Alejandro Jodorowsky. Yeah. Alejandro Jodorowsky has some weird hair. Yes. I he never does. trust people I never trust people who are bald with long hair. Like that should not exist. Yeah, no, it shouldn't. Because you're not yeah. fooling anybody. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm really short, but I have insanely long legs. Yeah. Like, it also shouldn't exist. It's just weird. That's That that reminds me, years and years ago, I was in this strip club. Yeah, I already like how the story has started. Continue. And the girls dancing was okay. They were okay. You know, but the bartender was really, really cute. She was just a cute girl, you know. Um, thin, long reddish brown hair. You know, kind of pixie-ish almost. And then she stepped out from behind the bar, and she had somebody else's ass. Her ass was huge. It was really somebody else's ass. That's odd. You know, picture Jackie from Roseanne, okay? Yeah. But give her Roseanne's lower half. Ugh, okay. It was that bizarre looking. That's weird. Yeah. And and, and you can't say anything. What are you going to say? My God, your ass is huge. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have gotten one lap dance in my life, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah. Because it was, what, 1998, 1999, I yeah. think. And... I was doing a play at the time, and um, the star of the play just took my girlfriend and I out. Yeah. So maybe like 2000, I think. Um, So, because it was Debbie. So like 2000, maybe 2001. So the star of the play takes us out to a strip club, and we go to the strip club, and he's like, hey, Steve, you're going to get a lap dance? And I'm like, no, lap dances aren't my thing. And he said, I'll, I'll pay for it. Like, I, I got money to burn. Doesn't matter to me. And I go, yeah, but it's got to be the right woman and the right song. I mean, I can't just, like, ask for a lap dance and then get a lap dance while the song is, I don't know, a crappy song by Smash Mouth. Mm-hmm. You know? Because that'll, that'll I'll feel horrible if it's a bad song and it's some woman that I'm not attracted to. It has to be the right situation to have a lap dance. And then next thing you know, you hear 
Up next to the stage, it's Rose. And suddenly, this like six foot five, massively built, like steroid woman comes out. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, she looks like a wrestler. This is frightening. <laughs> what is she going to dance to? And then you just hear, do you smell what the rock is cooking? Oh my she, God. She had like a WWF theme song montage. Oh no, 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 no. If she's pretending to be the rock, there goes my boner. You know? but, but it just the rock it was a montage so it was also oh, like the the dx theme song i thought you were gonna give her to me honey no i'm sorry i <laughs> with your what what is this oh my god what's going on well apparently there's water on the counter okay i didn't know that Okay, I did not put water on my glasses case. No. Because uh, I, I only do that on the weekends. You know that. Uh, okay. <laughs> you didn't specify the type of help you needed. I thought you were oh, just going to give me the baby. I'm sorry. I don't, well, I I'm not a mind wanted. reader. Here, have a baby. Okay. There you go. Now you have a baby. Now you have a crying baby. That's the point. I was. Good. If I gave you the baby, she would have cried. That's why I wanted your help. Help. And then I thought you would tell me what help you needed. Like, you didn't tell me. I'm not a mind reader. I'm like, oh, okay, well, she's going into the bathroom immediately. She's going to need help with her pants and maybe a spotter. <coughs> like, I don't know. Exactly. Okay. But that was a guess. You didn't tell me. I don't know. You just dropped the podcast. Sorry. You dropped the podcast. <laughs> uh oh. Scary podcast dropped you. Okay. Now, I want to say, after how many years? 17, 23, 50? We've been together for 48 years. 70 years. Uh-huh. Okay. After 70 years, I. <laughs> you okay? I think that you should know. No, this isn't you. Shut up. This is my conversation. After this long, I think that maybe you should know. I have said less, and you have been able to interpret it. How much have you had to drink, Steve? I've had 84 beers. So you're blaming this on the alcohol now? I'm I blame, I blame Is it on that the alcohol. what you're saying? Is I'm, that... I'm, no, I, I don't blame it on the alcohol. I blame it on the a- 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 alcohol. That's what I do. Damn it, I always go for the dog. Buddy, shh, this, is a, this is a married <laughs> argument. Shh. If you can steal my joke like that, then you should understand I needed you to pull my fucking pants down to piss. I'm sorry. I It's been a long time since I've been your pants puller downer for pissing. Look, I know it's been a long time. And anything near my personal bits. That's true. That is true. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm having a very deep, passionate relationship with my right hand at the moment. <laughs> Sometimes my left, if I want to toss it up. That's okay. Yeah. Until I hit menopause, it might be that way. Yeah. I'm going to hit woman of pause. You have a woman of pause. You know what? <laughs> I have a fucking speech to do tomorrow, and I'm not you prepared. <sighs> Just keep saying 9-11. Yes. No. 9-11 has nothing to do with this. I know, but are you saying that we shouldn't remember 9-11? Is that what you're saying, honey? God, well, I hope that we always remember 9-11. I would go, I would go with 9-11. I would also chuck in Martin Luther King somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, As Martin Luther King once said, 9-11. Maybe an inspirational quote from Kennedy. You know? Yeah. As um, Kennedy once said, Martin Luther King in 9-11. Yeah. And then you end it with, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing no. to fuck with. Because that <laughs> to be the end of all speeches. Steve really wants me to incorporate that into one of my speeches. That, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. If I could, I would. Or maybe this can be a topic of a speech. 
is Wu Tang Clan something to fuck with? And you know then what? finally, you can go. And this is my point. I have. It two, is nothing to. Fuck no, with. I have two more speeches to do before the semester's okay. over. If I can incorporate that somehow, I absolutely will. Good. Yeah. Good. Is the Wu Tang Clan something to get? Yeah, it is wet. Something to that? fuck with. It. Something to fuck with. Yeah. That might be a good. Let's see. We have argumentative. Well, are 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 you a sign? Oh, oh, oh. No, it can be my argumentative speech. Because yeah. I have persuasive, I have informative, I have argumentative speeches. The argumentative speech is the last one, and I think that I could probably incorporate that into. Cool. Is the Wu Tang Clan something to fuck with? Yeah. Yeah. Stop hitting me, Eleanor. Quit hitting your dad. Wonder I was doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm done right. with you. No, I'm not. I'm really ready to not go to school tomorrow. (laughs) Miss, stop crying and follow me. You have feet. You can walk. Here, I'll help you out, Eleanor. There you go. Well, that was a very fun time. I hope everyone learned a lot about me. Yes. Um... So Fake Jesus is the albino alchemist's pupil, and they engage in a trippy training montage. Basically, Bonnie, did yeah. you know that? Did you know that each stone has a soul. Um, I do now, but like, and also, that wasn't stone; it was like concrete or something. Yeah, and also tarot cards. Yes, and also. I'm, I, I know you've only seen, it, there's a good possibility that you've only seen Old Greg, but if the Mighty Boosh ever did make a movie, yeah, it would be a shot-by-shot remake of this. <laughs> that would make so much sense, especially during like the, the tarot card montage. I'm like, oh my god, like, yeah, no, just get this and add Old Greg to it, and that's basically the Mighty Boosh movie. Nice. I would want to see so, that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So now um the alchemist and fake Jesus are talking about the most powerful people on the planet? Yes. Well, you know, first off, when I wind up walking into the room that has a, a bunch of naked dead and possibly stuffed people I'm leaving <laughs> yeah you know that's yeah. if yeah. nothing else was the clue that's the clue yeah you would think and I'm taking that giant junk of gold gold with me yeah oh my god is this the purge yeah <laughs> it's happening do I need to buy a mask or will one be provided for me? Mm-hmm. I don't know how the purge works. Especially when so there's now, an empty spot in it. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> so now they're talking about the most powerful people Red on the planet. Flag. And, yeah, and I'm not sure. Apparently all of the most powerful people on the planet are going to get together and maybe form Captain Planet or maybe a Voltron robot. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Um, well, I, I I kind of I kind of took them like if you wanted to dig deep enough, I would bet you they all represented the world religions. Oh yeah, probably. You know, I, I just didn't want to put in that much effort. You know. Yeah. I, I burnt yeah. myself on what is it? You know. So I. I But it was, but it was interesting. I, I again, it it seemed like they represented all of the religions on the on the planet. Yeah, you know, and I so, found I found that kind of interesting. I noticed he, you know, did did some of these characters a lot, and then some he did hardly anything for. You yeah. know. Um, yeah. but each one they would give their name and say what planet they're from. Yeah. So the first one is an alien businessman who tries to make people beautiful, and his dad 
makes decisions by fingering his dead wife's vajayjay. So yeah. basically, the Donald Trump story. Yes. The second one is an alien from Mars and owns a lot of naked men and black swans and also sells weapons, including religious weapons. I really want that, um, uh, like that menorah machine gun. Yes. That would be pretty badass. Uh huh. The third alien is from Jupiter and he's stupid rich and he makes art with butts and has live nude art installments. Including a giant sex machine that uh, I don't know is is that is apparently a thing, and and had a baby sex machine. Yeah, and had a baby sex machine. Yes. The fourth person is from Saturn and deals with kids somehow. I'm not sure what's up with this one, but she teaches naked kids to hate Peruvians. So uh -huh. that's of course that's of course something I can get behind. <laughs> The well, fifth... well, they ran propaganda, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, propaganda. Mm -hmm. The fifth alien is from Uranus and uh, basically lives in a John Waters movie. Yes. That's the John Waters one. He's the financial advisor to the president, and also he just lives in a John Waters movie. Yes, he totally did, yes. Yeah. The sixth alien is from Neptune, and he's the violent police chief who dresses like a Mad Max extra and cuts a guy's dick off. Yes. So that's the scene with the amazing fake gore and a lot of paint and, and stuff. Like, really, really pretty. Yeah. Um, the seventh most powerful person is from Pluto. Yes. And he's into bizarre architecture, and he's trying to get people to live in coffins and treats employees like shit. So basically, it's the Papa John story. Yes. That's the Papa John story right there. Mm -hmm. So they all arrive at the tower for their meeting, and basically... Well, okay, these... okay. Okay, but do you notice what's missing? No. Mercury and Earth. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So I'm saying the alchemist was Mercury and Jesus ah, and Jesus, Jesus was Earth. Jesus was Earth. Gotcha. So they all arrive at the tower and the big plan is they're going to rob the Bellagio Hotel during a boxing match. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically the whole thing is just Brad Pitt George Clooney, they're really in charge. Yeah. And uh, Matt Damon is busy making excuses for Harvey Weinstein. I just want you to know that, that uh, Eleanor is in the background during this entire bit, and I told her to speak in tongues because I thought it would fit for this movie. Yes, it does very well. Yeah, it, I think it really helps discussion of the Holy Mountain if a half-naked, tiny person is speaking in tongues throughout the entire thing. I that helps with the film. I, I personally prefer Gregorian chants. So, yeah. so do you think she could pull that off? I will... I, I, I'm not sure. She's kind of just starting. So, yeah. like... Like, she'll probably give it a good old college try. <laughs> I miss waterbeds. Yeah. Yeah, I had a waterbed in junior high and high school. And I love that freaking thing. <laughs> it hardly ever leaked, too. Hardly ever leaked. So, like, it was never a problem for me. But then again, it was always just me laying on that thing. So it wasn't yeah. like... You know, it was never a problem for me. I loved my goddamn waterbed. <laughs> so, 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 what's their plan, buddy? So, what's their plan? Uh, basically, something that all religions speak about. They're going to give up all their worldly possessions and go on a pilgrimage to the holy mountain. But what are they going to do when they get to the Holy Mountain? 
Um, they were going to replace an old like council, like nine immortals. Yes, that are living on the holy mountain. They're going to kill them, or replace them, or learn their secrets, or something. Yes, that was yeah. basically the gist of it. Yeah. So they burn their money and they burn their own images and they set out to the holy mountain and that's when shit really starts getting Eastern religiony, yeah, and, like stupid trippy. Like I lost trying to make sense of it when they're in Peru or whatever burying water and they become a dog. Yes, like I really lost the film for like a good ten minutes there. A lot of birds coming out of unusual places throughout the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, throughout the movie, I liked, I like seeing the people get shot and then birds emerge from the gaping bullet holes. Yeah, that I liked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, but they but also the- as you're going through the plot. Listen to how coherent it sounds. You know? Yeah. So there was basically a pretty straightforward plot, like I'm saying. Then a lot of a lot of weirdness and artistry. You know, because the shots the shots were gorgeous no matter what it was. Yeah. You know, the shots were amazing looking. Be nice, Eleanor. Be nice. Don't hit. Don't hit. Okay. Ow! Ow! I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not a bouncy castle. Stop! So they they get to the ocean. They get to the sea or whatever, and they hit the sea in uh, matching green outfits. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bunny can't see you wave. Bunny can't see you wave. He can't see you waving. And then. Oh, she said. And then fake Jesus drowns a fake midget sidekick who might be the real midget sidekick. Like yeah. I'm a bit confused about that, but he may or may not have drowned his uh, armless, legless midget sidekick. Yeah, Bunny- that's exactly okay. that's exactly how I picture every Christian who puts their baby in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. To burn the devil out of them. Yeah. So they arrive on the shore in time for a freak out festival where a freak where a fake Frank Zappa is trying to convert people and people are getting wasted and there's I, jelly bean. Yeah, I found this I found this really an interesting interesting scene. You know, just just because these were all seekers of the holy mountain, you know, and they came yeah. here and they they got stuck at the um. Oh, what was the Face name camp. of the bar? What was Casablanca? No, Rick's Pandemonium. Something like that. Yeah, I think you might be right. Something like that, but something something a little more religious. Yeah. You know, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so I found that really cool. Like like they are at the foot of the holy mountain. You know. This is basically the the last leg, you know. This is this is when the when the this is when the hobbits Got to got to Helm's Deep, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or whatever like that place was where A- A- Aragorn was from, you know. Yeah. We're in the. This is where ninety nine percent of people. This is the farthest they have gotten. Right. So these are all of the, the failures, the failures yeah. who succumbed to the worldly ways and was like fucking mortality i'm just going to party yeah you know yeah yeah so we meet a few interesting creatures here 
Yeah. Each saying so, that they have been to the Holy Mountain. It, it That whole section kind of reminded me of Life of Brian. You know, when they were, when, when Brian was with all the people who were prophesying. Yeah. And, and he had to try to fit in. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what that reminded me of. Yeah, so so there's a bunch of trippy people, and it, it looks like, I don't know, I'm pretty sure I saw um, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem playing there, but it, it that might have just been me. Yeah. But anyway, they start climbing the Holy Mountain, and all I can think of is, like, I'm assuming that there are trials or tests of faith that you need to pass to actually get to the top of the mountain. Cause suddenly a guy has to cut his finger off and there's a tiger now for some reason, and they're burying horses and uh-huh. then they're eating the horses. And then there's a rain of gold coins that starts making someone bleed like nice one, Mario. Then there's an actual dog fight and then there's cows fucking, and then there's tarantulas everywhere. Yeah. Like, so I'm assuming that, you know, like, you're almost at the mountain, but you've got to pass through these, like, fucking trials of the Holy Grail or whatever. Yeah, temptations of some sort that, yeah. and, and and not exactly, basically you're having to give up something. Yeah. You know, and, and what everybody's giving up, in certain regards seem to have matched the people, but not quite. I, I, I would I would say um the guy with the coins, that was it. He was he was just all about the money, you know? Because really if you yeah. if you printing asses and calling it art, you know, you're a con man like Andy Warhol. You know? Yeah. You're not a you're not a real artist. You were doing this because because it, it gets you a lot of money because people will say how how they understand it and how deep it is, and it's just yeah. pictures of asses, you know. So so he was in it for the money. So he was getting pelted by all the gold coins that he kept trying to pick okay. up, even though yeah. they were killing him. Yeah, you know. Um, the guy with the tarantulas, I'm sure. I'm gonna go simple here, and he had to give up his fear of tarantulas. Yeah, something. You know, the one with the bull. I'm I'm interpreting it that that it it got a lot harder to track once they all were bald. You know. Yes. Yeah. As long as they had their hair, I can keep the character straight. But whatever she was, she was very sexual. It seems so that was being represented by the bull fucking the cow. Um, yeah, I don't know what was with the chicken carcasses. <laughs> yeah, the tree of dead chickens. Yeah, yeah, and he and he got his cock cut off by the witch in the tree. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, and I'm. I, I would have thought it would be the guy with the mohawk, the one who who saved people's testicles. Yes, but it wasn't him. You know, yeah. so you know. I, I mean, if it was him, then I, okay, give up your love for testicles. Yeah, you know. Um, But I'm willing to say maybe that's something that we missed earlier on, that we should have had some kind of clue why their temptation was, why their trial was, what what it was. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. This is a difficult film to wrap your head around. The guy with the mohawk who liked testicles, he beat the drums. That's all that he did. Yeah. I don't know. I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I. I. had the hardest time, like you said, trying to figure out who these people are. Yeah. You. You're all bald now. I don't know who any of you are. Yeah. Like but literally. I think, it's a, I think it's a movie I would want to watch every 
year, year and a half. Yeah. You know? and, and I'm sure I, each, I, each run I, through I, you'll get a little more out of it. Yeah. So 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 anyway, they they finally get to the top and prepare to attack the I don't know, immortals on the top of the mountain. Yeah. Turns out they're just mannequins. What Shyamalan! Yes. So then the, the the guy promises to say the secrets of life, and that's when the film breaks the fourth wall. Uh, nothing has an ending. Everything continues, and then they leave the holy mountain because the real life awaits, and that's the end of the film. Yes. Literally, the camera pans back so much that you see the crew, you see the lighting, you see everything. And then the people who are now actors yeah. just leave the film to because real life awaits. And it's, according to Wikipedia, a call not just to the people, but not just to the characters, but also to the audience uh -huh. that that the real life awaits you. And that's it. It's an adventure in yada, yada, yada. Yes. Go save the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting for Lefty. So... I, I don't particularly That's, like it when characters in movies start chastising me. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, way to be, way to be a judgy little bitch. Yeah. Do you know how much it costs to get out to see this fucking movie? Yeah. You know, good god, a like, bubble, yeah. buck, bucket of popcorn is twelve bucks. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like y'all are tripping. And you and, and you need to be putting your shit off on me? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry if I'm not enlightened. Give me a break. I love this movie. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I did too. I did too. But I think that a large portion of the reason why I liked it is because I hated it. Yeah. Because so many people said, oh, watching this film isn't isn't something you critique. It's an experience that you feel. Critique is useless when watching this beautiful work of art. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm going to judge the shit out of this movie. Oh, as as it should be. Don't, yeah, yeah. don't give me that. Yeah, you can't critique it because you don't fucking get it. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. That's But you know something that, that all of these movies have proven? Okay, all of these movies have proven what I have always said: if it's tits, it's gratuitous; if it's cock, it's art. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's and pretty. there was a exactly. lot of cock in these movies. True, you some know? of them were getting spit off. Th this is probably the most cocks I've seen in one month ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's all I've got. It's a good movie. You should watch it. And it's absolutely that, gorgeous with just so many beautiful fucking film. With so beautiful. many little things that were just so interesting to look at. I was watching it on my device, so there were like two or three different times when I paused the movie so I could grab like a random screenshot. Yeah. Just I'm like 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 I literally felt that I could pause the film at any time and get a random screenshot and it would be fucking beautiful. Yes. So I got some some really beautiful little images. I just sent you one. It's uh, Jesus in the tunnel going into the tower, and it looks like someone made a Christian version of James Bond. <laughs> like, what's your name? Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How do you like your crucifixions? Shaken, not stirred. Because uh -huh. it's that and big, long it. tunnel. Yeah. What? Because it, it's him going into that big, long tunnel. So it looks like that opening shot of every James Bond film. Da -da 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 Jesus. <laughs> He's the Savior, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is G. He's a sin. He is the thing. Savior. And and yeah. and it, it, 
going back to Jesus, and and when we had all the gas mask guys dancing with the other guys. Yeah. Okay. Did you notice who was in the background? No, who was in the background? A, a girl dressed as the devil. Oh, nice. So I took that as representing Jesus' ascension into hell. Okay. That makes sense. But it's just it's just like bits and pieces, and especially with the Jesus thing, it, it, it was not linear. It, no, it kind no, of starts no. with his death and works backwards from there. Yeah. It's not it's not direct. No. You are forced to sort of guesstimate a lot of this film. I could see I you know, it, it's one of those fine movies, you know? It's one of those yeah. movies that that is really, really good good but you just don't watch it very often yeah like the godfather is an excellent fucking movie i've maybe seen it four times in my life you know shawn of the dead i i broke a dvd yeah from over watching it (laughs) yeah like, I really like uh, Saving Private Ryan, but I think I've watched it once. Yeah, I've seen it twice, and it's a really good movie. Yeah, it's a beautiful film, but not something I actively want to view. So I'm kind of putting this this movie in that same kind of category. You yeah, know? That makes I, sense. I will watch it a few more times before I die. Probably at the same rate I do as The Godfather. Because I do put the, these two movies on the same level. Good. This is a beautiful fucking film. Yeah. So, that is all I've got for this week's movie. And that, yes. unfortunately, marks the end of uh, Bunno I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of myself. It, it, it's been an an impressive fucking ride. Yes. I will tell you that. Quite impressive. Mm-hmm. Movies that we may not have done otherwise. It, 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 a damn impressive month. Yes. And it starts that, from it starts from cheap horror to high art. Hell yeah. Hell mm-hmm. yeah. No, there's definitely a, a progression here. Yes. A thought out pro- progression. Yeah. That being said, we have watched some pretty intense movies in the month of Bunnoween. Some intense, uh, eye-challenging films. Yes. And I, I am remembered of the first time that I saw uh, Cannibal Holocaust. And it was such a uh, shocking assault. Yes. On so many levels with the gratuitous violence and the rape and the actual killing of poor defenseless animals that that I I had to clear the palate by watching an insane amount of like preschool cartoons and syphil and Ollie singing about fake blood and (laughs) prostitute laundry to sort of clear the palate. Therefore, I am officially dubbing November the November Palette Cleanser. Okay. The month of November, we are watching some big name, expensive Hollywood trash. Yes. To clear the palette. From uh, uh, blood sucking freaks and uh, Mother Earth raping the yes. dead corpse of God. So, a- well, now, now, now that you've seen these other movies too, don't don't they just make Begotten look worse? Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> the, the Holy Mountain makes Begotten look like an embarrassing student film. Mm-hmm. 
it's ridiculous that there are so many high level critics out there who watched fucking begotten and said, this is one of the greatest films of all time. Mm -hmm. It will challenge your notion of cinema. Like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. That is what society has deemed you. The art critic must say about this shitty film. Yeah. And it, and it's like, at least with Begotten, the Emperor had no fucking clothes there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, no, how could you? I mean, again, when we did Begotten, we summed it up going straight off its wiki page. Yeah. In a paragraph. And that's all yeah. there was. Nothing yeah. else happened. Yeah. You know? When you when you come to this movie, there's a detailed plot to discuss. Yeah, the discussion of this week's film lasted almost as long as the actual film. Yes, whereas what what is it was almost twice the size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are now launching into the November palette cleanser and we are going to try to wipe these memorable and beautiful and ostentatious and bizarre graphic films off of our palette with just some fun dumb stupid hollywood shit right. i can tell you the first two weeks next week god damn it we're watching spider-man homecoming yes uh, and I, and I watched, saved it because I was feeling I would need the palate cleanser. Good. I've watched it like two or three times. I've watched it by myself a couple of times. I've watched it with Natasha. Mm -hmm. And I've watched it with Maxwell. Maxwell has a lot to say about this film. Uh -huh. And the week after that, we are testing a theory of mine. Okay. Oftentimes, when there is a movie that comes out based on a book, I think of the film Flowers in the version. Air. No, I think of the film version of Ender's Game. Okay, I did not see it. The book was okay. Uh, the book was okay, but to some people, the book is the greatest book of all time, and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, if you... The worst reviews I saw of Ender's Game, the movie, said, I did not read the book, so I had no idea what was going on in this movie. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And that's a bad review, and that's a bad thing. If you're making a film version of the movie, it should be something that stands on its own that you understand having not read the book. A good movie... Yeah. You understand it without reading the book, and then you go to your local bookstore and buy the book, and you read the book, and it's familiar to you, but you pick up on a few things that weren't in the movie. Yeah. But still, they are two separately understandable things. With that in mind, uh -huh. last decade... I read The Gunslinger. I may have read the second book. I do not remember. Okay. Anyway, I have not read all of The Dark Tower. I've read some I of have. The Dark Tower a long ass time ago. You have read The Dark Tower. I yeah. have not read all of The Dark Tower. Week two of our November so palette pissed me off. So is the pissed me off. fucking Dark Tower movie, and it is my theory that I will not know what the fucking book, what the fucking movie's about. Yeah. That is my theory. I, 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 I was as pissed off at the Dark Tower series as I was with, oh, the Green Mile. Yeah. The Green Mile. Because with the Gunslinger, like, you sucked me into buying all of these, like a twenty bucks a pop. I, I was getting the the big soft covers, you know. Yeah. At twenty yeah. buck fucking bucks a pop, like I got like a hundred and fifty bucks investment in this series of books. Yeah. And you still That's fucked up the ending. 
Yeah. And you can see the bastard you put yourself in your own books. Never, ever. The Green Mile, he, um... Well, I have a theory that, that, that Stephen King and Peter Stroud are the same person. That's a good theory. Uh, because they, they had written The Talisman together. The Talisman, yeah. Uh, and they had written um, The Dark Believe House or The Black that? black House. Yeah. yeah. The follow-up yeah. to The Talisman. Okay. So they've collaborated on two books. Stephen King was Richard Bachman. So he's got president for making for making other people up. You know? Yeah. And then when Stephen King came out with The Green Mile, which was all in chapter books. Yep. Peter Stroud came out with a book all in chapter books. Mm. Which I find really odd. But like the chapter books for Green Mile, this is why the Green Mile pissed me off. The chapter books, it it was a small book. It was about the size of a choose-your-own-adventure. You know? Yeah, they were tiny things. And, and they were three bucks a pop, which sounds kind of good, but there were like, what, five? Yeah, there, I were, think. there were a couple of them, five or six. Five times three, that's more expensive than if you just released a book. Yeah. I had a theory for a while about uh, an author, because we got a series of werewolf romance fantasy books by a Cassandra Rice. Okay. And there was a part of me that just thought, if I were Anne Rice and I was famous for these vampire books, and then I had an idea for a series of werewolf books, yeah, I could not write it as Anne Rice. Oh, okay. because everyone would, every, because everyone would say, "Oh, look at the vampire writer." Now she's writing werewolves? Shh, she's done. <laughs> so I always looked at a uh, Cassandra Rice. Oh, let me read your bio. Okay, it sounds fake, and you're not related to Anne Rice. Bitch, I think you are Anne Rice. <laughs> like a series of three or four like werewolf, uh, highly detailed gothic werewolf books. Like, oh, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure this is just Anne Rice. Well, wait a second, because I don't know—I don't know if we could just go jump into that conclusion. What if Anne Rice is a series of clones? Okay, I like this idea. Yeah, and and. You know, they would have an urge to be a writer. They may go off to other professions. I think if there are a bunch of clones, Cassandra Rice may have a similar idea, but it's like werewolves. Yeah. Werewolves. This is genius. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Anne Rice's clone. With with no awareness of who Anne Rice is, because that would ruin the experiment. Right. You know, so they they have a a subliminal suggestion to forget Anne Rice's name and anything that you may hear from her so that every time it's new, like 50 first dates. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's the first two weeks. Next week, we're doing Spider-Man Homecoming. The week after that, we're watching the Dark Tower movie. We still have a few more weeks in the month of November, and I have some things hopefully lined up that should be exciting. But that's next month, our November palette cleanser. I'm working on some things. It's going to be fun. Next week, remember, we're watching Spider-Man Homecoming. And for homework, Supernatural Season 6, Episode 13. It is entitled The French Mistake. Yes. Finally, get around to talking about Misha Collins. Finally. <laughs> Love it. So that's next week. That's going to be fun. Awesome. Now that I look back, though, at this episode, wow, so many 
uh, surprising turns, so many shocking moments. We laughed. We, we cried. Yeah. Really looking back at, at all of it, I gotta say, you know, I think this has been a pretty fun, pretty fun, pretty good episode. Yeah. I, I think this has been a damn good episode. I I agree with your damn. I agree with your cussing. Uh-huh. Yeah. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening. <laughs> and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Skitty bop a doo wow. Cut and print. <laughs>